A brutal weather pattern is developing across the United States, which is going to bring record-breaking high temperatures over the next several days across the United States, with no end in sight to this heat wave. Additionally, we are expecting more severe weather over the next few days, with damaging winds, large hail, and a few tornadoes being a possibility. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today, and right now we have a batch of showers and thunderstorms that have been ongoing over the last 6 to 12 hours, stretching from New Mexico back into the Midwest, where generally speaking, we had some scattered severe weather yesterday, and a lot of these storms are actually circling around a high-pressure system, which is also our heat dome, or known as a death ridge, and this is bringing very warm and as well as dry weather to areas in the southeast right now, but it will not be super dry, because we are actually expecting some severe weather to return as we go into tomorrow along the east coast, but with that said, a lot of the storms are actually moving off to the north or northeast, kind of corresponding with the flow of this high pressure system. On the other hand, we have a couple of shortwave troughs that are continuing to bring enough ample moisture and wind shear for the potential for damaging wind tail and even a few tornadoes, which that threat will ramp up today and tomorrow from the central plains back into the Midwest. Now let's talk more about the weather pattern that'll be impacting the United States over the next couple of weeks. And to look at that, we are going to look at our mid-level flow and our jet stream. And this is what it looks like right now. We have a low pressure system that's back along the west coast this is helping to bring multiple shots of severe weather over the next few days and then this right here is our large heat dome or also known as a death ridge which basically means it is very warm and we are dealing with record-breaking high temperatures right now in these areas additionally it is fairly dry we've not had a whole lot of shower and thunderstorm activity however as we go into wednesday and thursday i think things are going to start to change a little bit as this high pressure system will begin to weaken a little bit but that's not going to really stop this heat from happening because we don't have any signs of colder weather coming. We don't really have a big cold front coming. We do not have a large scale low pressure system coming to help to basically cool things down along the East Coast. So unfortunately, this heat wave is going to continue. But at the same time, our jet stream is actually going to become a bit more zonal and also weaker, which means that we should see less big storm systems by this weekend. However, there will still be some level of severe weather. It's just not going to be nearly as significant as what we've been accustomed to here over the last few weeks. So as we go into the weekend, that jet stream and as well as our mid level flow is very far off to the north. We may see a little bit of severe weather over the weekend back over in the northern plains, the Midwest, and the northern Ohio Valley. But right now, it does not appear as if anything is going to be super organized. By early next week, we are going to continue with this weather pattern where we're going to have our jet stream lifted very far off to the north and mostly zonal. And then by around Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, our high pressure system may actually start to build back over in the Rockies, which may actually end up providing a little bit of a cooler stretch back along the east coast sometime during the middle and end of next week, which is just in time for the 4th of July. And talking more about this heat wave, we are expecting these temperatures to stay above average for the next several days, especially if you're along the East Coast. Our heat dome has grown to the point where we have temperatures as high as the low 100s in Connecticut and even Massachusetts today. That will also continue into tomorrow as well. And then by Thursday and Friday, temperatures are going to cool down just a little bit, especially back over New England, but above average temperatures will continue for the Northern and Central Plains, also back through the East Coast. And then by the weekend and into early next week, we got another shot of warm air coming right up. And this will likely bring the potential for more record-breaking temperatures this weekend and early next week. And then things start to get a little bit more mixed, I think, for the majority of the next work week. So anytime for the beginning of July, I do think temperatures will be balanced. I think we're going to see some above-average temperatures. On the flip side, there will still be some below-average temperatures as well. These are some of the high temperatures that you can expect for today. And notice areas like Boston and Connecticut will be in the low 100s. These will shatter records for some areas and even back over near Washington DC back into eastern North Carolina there will be temperatures between 100 to 105 degrees that is just absurd even for the end of June we do not usually see this type of weather this early on the other hand things are going to be actually nicer back over in the Midwest and the Northern Plains where temperatures have been in the 80s and 90s recently we are going to get some relief most areas will be in the 70s or low 80s and on Wednesday we are going to continue with these really warm temperatures a little bit of relief for New England, but things are still going to be very hot near Maryland and also back into North Carolina, even back into Georgia, where temperatures will be flirting around 100. And don't forget, when we factor in humidity and even the wind, we can get heat indices, which basically means the feel like temperatures. And for today, many areas in Virginia, South North Carolina, back into Maryland will feel as warm as 110 to even upwards of 115 degrees. Look at this. I mean, it's just unbelievable, again, how warm it is going to be today. If you have any respiratory issues, it is a good idea 
idea to avoid being outdoors for long periods of time. Now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days, beginning with today, which is Tuesday, and we have a slight risk of severe weather in place across the High Plains and a marginal threat that goes into the Midwest and the Ohio Valley. The greatest concerns for today will be damaging winds. This is across the board, isolated to scattered damaging winds. Additionally, large to very large hail is a possibility, mainly back over in Wyoming and just outside of Denver, Colorado, where hail could be as large as the size of baseballs this afternoon and also into the early evening hours. There's also a chance for a couple of tornadoes. This is going to be contingent on how high our dew points get back over in areas like Wyoming and also Colorado, but if we have enough moisture in this area later this afternoon, there could be a tornado or two, especially out of the supercells that try to fire in eastern Wyoming. There might also be one that tries to fire in Colorado. So generally speaking, a couple of tornadoes are a possibility. Honestly, if one does occur too, I would not be surprised if it was on the larger or even more photogenic side of things with today's environment. So stay weather aware and have multiple ways to receive warnings. And then on Wednesday, our threat of severe weather will continue across the northern and central plains back into the Midwest and the Ohio Valley, and including a large chunk of the East Coast, which has not really been in a risk of severe weather in quite some time. Two slight risks of severe weather in place. We got one in the Carolinas and then one along the Gulf Coast. And then the large marginal threat extends across almost every single state in the northern plains and also back along the East Coast, where the greatest concern with the storms tomorrow will be damaging winds, which could be scattered to numerous at times, especially with our storms in the Carolinas. Large hail up to the size of golf balls will also be a possibility with some of our storms. And then the tornado risk for right now, there's actually none across the entire lower 48, which this is the first time in quite a while that we've had no tornado risk outlined in any part of the country. However, I would not be surprised if the Storm Prediction Center were to issue a small little 2% tornado risk in parts of the Midwest on Wednesday. That is going to be contingent though in storm mode. And overall, I'm not very confident that we are definitely going to get a tornado risk in that area, but it is something that we'll be keeping an eye on. So here's the timing for severe weather beginning with today, which overall we still have some showers and thunderstorms out there this morning. Those will clear out just after lunchtime. And then by around two to three o'clock is when storms will begin to fire up back over between Denver and also into southeastern Wyoming, where a discrete supercell or two are going to be a possibility both in Colorado and Wyoming. Once again, if we have enough moisture, there is a chance for a tornado or two, but large hail and damaging winds definitely going to be the dominant concerns today. By around six to seven o'clock, these storms are going to start to cluster together and they will eventually move into western Nebraska and northwestern Kansas with the primary concern of damaging winds, maybe a little bit of large hail, and then maybe a brief tornado. Storms will start to fall apart just after midnight tonight, and then by early tomorrow morning, we just got a bunch of rain really back over in the Midwest. A few more storms will try to fire up Wednesday afternoon across the central plains, mainly in Nebraska. We may briefly get a supercell with the potential for an isolated tornado, but generally, large hail and damaging winds will be the main concerns with any storms that fire up. And then if you're back over in the Midwest or the Ohio Valley, there will be some pop-up showers and thunderstorms during the middle and end of this afternoon with damaging winds being a possibility. No tornado risk really with those storms. And then on Wednesday, we'll have a little cluster of storms go through in the morning. That'll be the remnants of what actually builds up later today in areas like the Central Plains. And then eventually by around the middle and end of the afternoon is when we may see a few supercells fire off, perhaps back over in Nebraska, maybe even a couple back over just southeast of the Twin Cities near Madison, Wisconsin, and just off to the west of Chicago, where very large hail damaging winds and an isolated tornado threat would exist, but it's going to depend on the evolution of those storms, and if these are much more disorganized and clustered together, I really wouldn't expect more than much more than damaging winds. However, if they do go more discreet, we actually could see the potential for very large hail and even a tornado risk. So something to keep an eye on. It is, again, another one of those mesoscale days where really anything could happen, but I think that'll be definitely something that we need to keep an eye on during the afternoon and early evening on Wednesday. And then Thursday could also be a somewhat interesting day across the Midwest where we may see a couple of different modes of severe weather, one of which being more a cluster or a line of storms trying to form just south of the Twin Cities back towards Kansas City with damaging winds, hail, and a low tornado risk existing. And we may even see a couple more storms out in front of that line that may try to fire up with very large hail and even a low tornado risk. Not really a slam dunk forecast here, but this is again another mesoscale day, so really anything could happen. But this is another day that we need to keep an eye on, mainly for those in the Midwest. There would also be an isolated threat of severe weather back over in Indiana and Ohio, but damaging winds would be the main concern that far to the east. There will just be enough wind shear, though, on Thursday for maybe a localized tornado threat somewhere over here in Iowa, Wisconsin, Illinois, maybe even northern Missouri. And then on Wednesday, back over the mid-Atlantic in the southeast, we will have a bunch of storms that are going to fire up during the mid to late afternoon, right around that high pressure system, with mainly a damaging wind and hail threat. Really no tornado risk with these storms. They're going to be very local. 
localized, but they will be pretty scattered to numerous at times across North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. So if you have any outdoor planes, you may want to postpone those, have them earlier in the day, or even have them on a different day. And on top of the severe weather we'll be watching for in the Midwest and the Central Plains tomorrow, there is a risk of isolated severe weather along the East Coast and in the Southeast. In areas like North Carolina, back through the Gulf Coast, with damaging winds and hail being a possibility. On Thursday, we're not really expecting anything super organized, but I do think scattered showers and thunderstorms will continue across the Midwest, back into the Central Plains, and things are also going to start to pick right back up in activity along the Mid-Atlantic and also into the Southeast, with damaging winds and hail being a possibility out of any severe storms that we see. And then on Friday, there is a very low chance of isolated severe weather back over in the Northern Plains, but across the board, Friday looks like the pick of the week if you do not want to be looking at severe weather. On Saturday and Sunday is when we're going to be watching mainly the Northern Plains in the upper Midwest for at least a couple of rounds of severe weather. Damaging wind tail and a low tornado risk should accompany those severe storms. And then by Monday and into Tuesday, we're really not expecting anything super organized as we go into early July for severe weather. I think we're going to be in a little bit of a quieter weather pattern when it comes to significant severe weather. There will obviously be chances of severe weather every single day, but it should be fairly isolated to start off July. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. We likely will not have a video tomorrow, but we should have another one on Thursday, so stay tuned. Click the bell icon so you're notified with the latest forecast. And once again, there is a low chance of a live stream today and tomorrow, so make sure that you are staying tuned, and we'll see you guys all again in the next video or live stream.